Hey guys, and welcome to another Monkey Pixels tutorial. It's been a while since I recorded one, and since I want to do more of these in the future, I think let's start with a general video editing workflow tutorial. So this isn't really a tutorial per se, it's more a workflow video from start to finish, from all the steps that I take after shooting until the finished video. And I hope you enjoy this, and since it's Final Cut, you don't have to worry about it if you're in Premiere Pro, since this is a general overview of the steps that I go through when editing. Of course there's some specific steps in there that are very specific to Final Cut Pro but even if you're a Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve user I think maybe just have a look at what I will be doing in Final Cut and well maybe you'll have a closer look at Final Cut afterwards if you like what you see. So after the shooting is done and we've shot everything from drones, different cameras, maybe have some audio recordings and all the stuff we need, we need to bring all of this into our computer. So the first thing we need to do is create a folder structure. And what I like to do is I like to sort all my footage by source. So basically I create different folders for different cameras, for drones, for the audio, maybe the sound effects and and sometimes the music, extra footage, all the kind of stuff we need. Maybe some screen grabs, screen recordings, everything you can think of, put it in a separate folder on your hard drive. The structure I'm currently using is basically divided by years. So I have a folder for 2019 and under that there goes YouTube, client work, commercial work, you know, all the different kind of projects and then so on and so forth. But that is pretty much up to you and everyone has their own system. So obviously the next step is to take all these files from all the different sources and copy them over and sometimes this can take a while so we're working on an external SSD. So after we've put all the footage, all the audio files from all our different sources into our folder structure, we are opening Final Cut and we are creating a new library. And before we had a different system, so we actually had a library for each client and maybe even for YouTube, for reviews we had one library or for tutorials we had another one. That obviously has the advantage that everything is in one library. For example, we have one client that we shot over 10 videos for and that is pretty neat and comes in handy if you need some footage from another video like the logo, like the titles and all that kind of stuff. But the downside is that these libraries get pretty pretty big, especially if you shoot in 4K, maybe even raw. And since hard drive storage got a lot cheaper the last couple of years, but really fast storage is still pretty expensive. So we couldn't really afford having all these in one big library. So what we do now is every video has their own library. So once we created the library for the specific video, I drag and drop everything in there into the event. And this has the use, use. And this has the huge advantage that everything is already neatly organized within Final Cut Pro. So now we have all these keyword structures for our different drones and cameras and music and so on and so forth. In our sample project, which is a little project of a friend of mine that I accompanied, he started boxing, he had no prior experience and his challenge was that after three months of training, he will actually start an amateur fight, which he did and I'm pretty proud of him and the project turned out pretty neatly. But since the project was pretty small, we don't have that many different cameras. But looking back at Abu Dhabi, for example, where we had lots of different cameras, where we had drones, where we had lots of music and extra footage, this definitely comes in handy when shooting time lapses and all that kind of stuff. And then you need to edit quickly in post and you already know where to find all that stuff. So this is definitely a huge time saver. So now that everything is in our library and we have all the footage gathered together, here comes our first step. And this is probably one of my favorite features of Final Cut and I haven't found anything similar in Premiere Pro or any other editors and that is the option to highlight and favorite footage within Final Cut. So what we do now is we go from the very first clip to the last and we just look for footage that we can use in our edit later. So we start with an in point and an out point and hit the F key and then this is the favorite part of this clip. 
And sometimes we only have one favorite sequence in one clip, but sometimes maybe we have three or four or five. And this comes in really handy later. So now we can just filter for our favorites. And now there's only the parts from the footage that we actually like to have in our edit later. And this comes in really handy as well later. So now that we've seen all the footage that we have from all our different sources, we get a pretty good feel for the video we have done. So we know if we have a lot of fast shots, if we have a lot of slow shots. So at this point, I like to look for music. And this video isn't sponsored by Epidemic Sound at all, but Epidemic Sound is definitely our favorite by far with a large margin when it comes to music for our project. As a matter of fact, they have such great albums in there that I would actually listen to their music on the go, in private, when not editing videos. And of course, you can filter for all the different genres and moods you are going for in your video. And one really cool feature they have is that you can not only download the entire song, but you can also download the different stems of it. So just a melody, just a bass or just the vocals, which comes in pretty handy later in the video when you kind of want to switch it up and just have a, the same song, but in a slower pace or without the vocals. So this is an option that I really like of Epidemic Sound. And they have a monthly fee and for that monthly fee you can use all their music unlimited on your channels. And that doesn't only include YouTube but Instagram, Twitter and all your other social media accounts. But if you want to use it for bigger projects, for different clients, then you can purchase additional licenses. And again, it's not sponsored by Epidemic Sound but if you want to do us a favor and support this channel, just go through the link in the description and if you want to sign up you get one month for free and if you use our link that would support the channel by a little bit. So now that we have our music and I really wanted to go for something epic in this edit, we start editing the video. So we start with creating a project and although we shot everything in 1080p, I will still do a 4k timeline here and I will do a separate video about that pretty soon while we're choosing a 4k timeline over a 1080p timeline. So once we have our project, I'll just look for the very first shot how I would like our video to start. So what I usually do is I take the first two or three clips and I will already load them in our storyline. And then I will take the music, place them underneath and from now on I will just kind of feel out the vibe that I want to have for the video and I will edit these clips loosely to the sound. But this is going to be a really rough first raw cut. And I won't take too much time neatly organizing every clip, but just put them in the right order that I wanted to have for the video. So the next step is when I have the overall raw cut from chronological order from start to finish, I will look into it closer and I will add it to the beats. I will add some speed ramps, I will add some transitions and maybe even cut the music. Or like I said earlier, when we have different stems and different fields for it, maybe I will just cut out the melody, the bass or the vocals so that I have a finished project from start to finish. So after this, I have my complete raw cut edit it to the music and this is where we go from here. So in this particular case, since I wanted to have it really epic and feel cinematic, I wanted to add a ladder box. And usually I don't like adding ladder boxes on adjustment layers, but just export the project in the appropriate aspect ratio. But YouTube pretty much has a problem with everything that isn't 16 to 9, especially if you want to add end screens or something else to your video. So in this case, we actually added a ladder box. So what we did is just put an adjustment layer on top, add a ladder box and chose the 2.35 to 1 ratio because I feel this is the most cinematic. And obviously since we shot everything in 16 to 9, we need to go through every clip and just move it around a little bit to optimize the framing. So after we're done with that, here comes my favorite part and that is color grading. I already did a color grade in 30 seconds tutorial the other day on our YouTube channel. So I'll link it up here so you can check it out in a little bit more depth. But I will obviously walk you through the process that I did for this video in particular. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find a reference frame that we actually want to color grade. So I took this one and the first step I'm doing is color correction. 
So I'm actually correcting the exposure. I'm bringing back saturation since we shot everything in log. I will also adjust the color temperature and a little bit of contrast into the video. So this is pretty much the footage after the color correction. Next up, we add a custom LUT. In this case, I wanted to go for a really cinematic feel like I already said. So I chose Bluebird from our Canon LUT pack. And all our LUT packs are on sale right now. They're 25% off on sale on our website. You don't need any discount codes. Just go onto our website. Links in the description below if you want to purchase one of our LUT packs. Next up, I add some film grain because I think this is a pretty good stylistic choice for a box film since it gives the whole thing a little bit more cinematic vibe and a little bit rougher tone to it. And my weapon of choice here is the Renoiser by Red Giant because you have a lot of options to choose from and you can actually adjust the grain just to your liking depending on what your footage looks like. So the last thing we did is just sharpen the image a tiny bit since Canon footage, especially in 1080p, is a little soft, which in general I like, but a little bit of sharpening goes a long way here. And I just used the internal sharpening tool, which actually works pretty well. So once we have our reference frame completely color graded to my liking, I will just copy the attributes and paste them onto any other clip that looks pretty similar to get a complete consistent feel. And I usually just copy and paste the uh, same edits to other clips, but I will still do some minor adjustments like uh, color temperature if it was shot in a different light setting and then go copy and pasting it all over again since all my footage has a consistent feel to it and the entire timeline is color graded. So after everything in our timeline is color graded, we will move on to sound design. And sound design is really important in pretty much any film. And here I already recorded a lot of audio on set, so I didn't need to artificially do a lot of sound design in post, but we added some whooshes for some transitions and maybe uh, some other steps that I didn't really record right on set. And for this, we have a huge library gathered over the years from different sources. Some we did ourselves in post-production, some we just downloaded from some different sites. But our go-to again is Epidemic Sound because they have a lot of sound design and sound effects on their website and it's easily searchable. So I don't really have to look around somewhere on the web since we already have an account with Epidemic Sound. I think I already did a tutorial on sound design in general. It's a bit older, but I'll still link it up here if you're interested in that. And that's pretty much done. If there were any titles or any motion graphics or logos or anything like that for a client, this would be the time to actually insert them into the video. But since we don't have any of those, I'll just need to export the clip and we're done with it. And it's pretty easy in Final Cut because you have the master file export preset. I just chose H.264 as a codec method and hit export. And that gives us the best results for client delivery as well as YouTube videos. And again, we put another export folder into our folder structure so we have everything neatly organized. So there's the final version one, the really, really final, the final, 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 final version and all the other final versions that you usually go along with video edits. And that's pretty much it. That's the entire workflow from start to finish, what I do when I'm editing videos. And I usually say we with a lot of our videos, but this one is a little different because Belle has her own style and a lot of her methods are pretty much the same as mine, but especially when it comes to music, her approach is a little different. She definitely needs the music before she even starts rating the footage to get a feel for what she's looking for in the footage, whereas I'm more of a visual person and I like to get an overview of all my visuals and then decide what kind of music I want to edit to. So again, some similarities, but also some opposites. So there you have it. This is my complete editing workflow when it comes to editing videos in Final Cut Pro 10. And now I'm pretty curious how my workflow is actually different from yours. So drop a comment below what you do differently or what you haven't seen in my workflow that might have surprised you. And if you like this video, go ahead and actually like this video and maybe subscribe to our channel for more tutorials and other videos in the future. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye. 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 Bye.
Bye. Bye. Bye.